Isla Gold, 25, 130 bucks. Is it a bargain? Let's find out. Welcome to another episode of Airquake Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Isla Gold Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is the 25-year-old, uh, readily available through Total Wine & More, uh, Drizzly, and a few other online uh, retailers. But uh, before I get into this, let me tell you a little bit about the whiskey. It's imported by Serranti Imports of Stamford, Connecticut. It's a single malt from an undisclosed Isla distillery. It's aged 25 years, bottled at 40% alcohol by volume, and sells for about $130. So this video is part of a series that I'm doing on independent Isla bottles. Uh, some that you may see at the stores and kind of wonder, hmm, I've never heard of that uh, importer, never heard of that uh, producer, is it any good? Now I've had some that are as low as $22, some that were sort of in the mid 40s range, but this is one of the most expensive during the series at $130. So right off the bat, it is golden in color, slight tinge of orange. On the nose, moderate intensity. So it doesn't have a real big nose. It doesn't have a sort of a large waft of smoke and peat coming on your face as you might get from a lot of other uh, peated Isla whiskeys. What I get on the nose is subtle aromas of dried stone fruit, such as uh, peach, a little bit of pear, perhaps a little bit of apple. Uh, there's a little bit of a chocolate note there, but also a leafy character like dry autumn leaves. There's a definite spiciness going on there. I would say a little bit of uh, ginger. There's a character that reminds me of freshly baked uh, gingerbread cookies. A little bit of a graham cracker, so there's sort of a uh, I would say brown cereal note or a brown bread note there as well. So we don't know if it's unchill filtered or has any added coloring, but uh, because it's only 40%, it probably is uh, a little bit filtered. The smoke seems really, really integrated into all the other characteristics. So I get mostly dried fruits, uh, some spice. There's a little bit of vanilla going on there, but it's really a spice and dried fruit character there. And I think the peat character is really coming across more as sort of dry autumn leaves than it does say anything super smoky or peaty. On the palate. So the nose is definitely confirmed on the palate. It is dry. There's a hint of sweetness there, but this is not a real sweet whiskey. The peat character is definitely interwoven really, really well with the whiskey. Uh, if you were to taste this blind, you might even be surprised to think, oh, this is peated, because it doesn't have the typical characteristics of a peated whiskey. There's no campfire, uh, there's no uh, barbecue, there's, there's none of those big in-your-face PD characteristics. It's really mild and interwoven, and mostly what you're getting is a lot of spice. It's got a really good development from the front into the middle into the finish. What sweetness there is, is gonna be up front. It then sort of becomes savory and uh, dried leafy tobacco notes on the mid palate. And that spiciness kicks in about three quarters of the way back. Definitely a little bit of a ginger, a hint of saltiness, and it's got a really long, long finish. But most of what you're getting is that sort of ginger spice, spice uh, cookie character. Overall, I would say this is a really complex whiskey. It does sort of grab your attention as you sort of analyze it and experience all the different flavors and the, the, the layers of the flavors. The spiciness on the back end has sort of a tingling feel to it. So it's a spicy tingle, not an alcohol tingle. Um, and so I really, really like it. I think this is an absolutely killer whiskey in terms of what it has, in terms of the aromas and flavors that it has. However, sadly, what it has is not emphasized enough in the whiskey. It is not loud enough. It is not expressive enough. It's sort of like listening to music, but the music is in the next room. So you're hearing it come through the wall, but you're not in the presence of the actual uh, musicians. So it's good, it's well crafted, it's tasty, uh, it's a really nice whiskey. I just wish it had a little bit more oomph. 
46% would be really, really, really nice. Just, just a little bit more. In terms of the texture and the mouthfeel, uh, it does feel thin. Uh, put it on ice and a lot of the characteristics sort of go away and it becomes sort of a one chord song. Now, with all these whiskeys, which you ultimately you can't know exactly where it came from, I have been comparing them with other whiskeys that I have in my collection to see if I can determine as to its identity. This one is unlike any Isla distillery. I cannot even guess, I can't even get close as to what I think it, it might be from, what, what distillery. Uh, if it was a blended malt, that would be uh, you know a little bit more understandable but the fact that it's a single malt it's a representation of a single distillery uh if i had to guess i would say it's a bullmore uh, it's definitely it's not kalila it's not i it's not ardbeg it's not lagavulin it's not and i'm coming to that conclusion more in terms of what it's uh, not rather than what it is um i've had a few older uh, bullmores not reviewed them on the channel when I've shared them with other people or had whiskeys with other people or uh, when I was actually on Isla, got to taste some um, older Boomers. So I'm kind of leaning in the in, in, in the direction that I think this is an older Boomer, which, you know, kind of goes with, you know, Boomer isn't the big in your face PD characteristic, which sort of lines up with the way this uh, whiskey is. Uh, most of the Boomers that I've had that I bought have been say like Douglas Lang, uh, which, which are actually quite nice. Now, what would I give in terms of a score? Um, if you could ignore the price, ignore the price, uh, I, I would tend to go, you know, this is a good solid 90 points. In terms of recommendation, that's a challenge because at 130 bucks and to be this thin and to lack the mouth feel, um, that's where it's lacking. It's a whiskey that, man, if it only had, you know, a little bit more oomph, it would be just a mind-blowing whiskey. Uh, they've really cut this one short. So, uh, am I going to recommend it? I'm probably going to say no at $130. If this was under $100, bucks, if say this was, say, closer to $90, uh, then I'd say, yeah, absolute uh, must-buy. But $130, bucks, i am going to say no. There's a lot of other whiskeys out there still in the market uh, that uh, are just going to be a lot more satisfying and are going to be just as complex as this one. So uh, I'm going to have to give it a pass, even though I gave it 90 points. I know that sounds like a contradiction. I'm, I'm giving it a pass because of the price point, not because of uh, the whiskey it's, itself. How, how did it get to that 90 points if the mouth feel is so thin? Because the flavors and the aromas are so good, it gets me to the 90 points. If it was a little bit more intense, if it had more concentration, if it had uh, more depth to it, if it had a better mouthfeel, you, I could eat, I mean, and it wouldn't, it would just take a little bit more oomph. I, I could see this getting to like 93 to 95 points. The profile it, ha it has is that good. It's just cut itself short. It's just cut itself short. Uh, and that and that's a real, real bummer. Um, the flavors and aromas, absolutely spectacular. The mouthfeel and the intensity of the flavors is what's falling short. That may sound a little contradictory, I think, to some people, I, it, but it that's the nature of this whiskey. It is self-contradictory. It is a whiskey in which somebody really sold it short. They really stretched it too far and getting it down to 40. Although, you know, Scotch whiskeys lose ABV over time, but I don't think 25 years would make it get down to anywhere near 40. They should have left it at cast strength. If this was a cast strength whiskey and was really, you know, tuned up, you know, really much, had a lot more volume to it and, and, and with these flavors, wow, it would just be an absolutely mind blowing whiskey. Alrighty, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, well, thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would ask that you subscribe. Ring the bell to be notified when I go live or when I post a new video. And until next time, Salon Jiva. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.